I used to be a slave. Kept under the thumb of the master. The bastard that made me hunt down my own kin. How did he do that, you ask? With the living scar you see on my cheek, this horror that takes no more than a song sung by Master Dearest to control my very thoughts. But now the tables have turned. I broke my shackles. And when I finally find him, I will make the Master sing a very different kind of song. Meet your maker. I'll yield to none. Prepare yourself. It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of sauce. Flies to honey. The monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. Still a bit groggy, I'll be. Don't worry. The sedative will wear off soon enough. Easy now. No need to hurry. Get your bearings and report to me upstairs. So it... It wasn't a dream after all.
I don't even remember them strapping me down. Not a very chatty fellow, are you? Junk. Boring. Rubbish. Junk. Junk. An animal sty. Freight or food? Did you expect a needle? Shaking her fluffy coat, the sheep eyes you balefully. Her rectangular eyes like letterboxes to the void. With one sharp hoof, she kicks you right in the shin.
Get me out of this cage and I'll make it worth your while. You in? Your guess is as good as mine. Someone screamed loud as a banshee. After that, pure pandemonium. They never even told me what I was accused of. Just dragged me down here. Set me free, and I'll set you free. A fair trade, I should think. A gentlewoman among jesters, you are. Give that lever a pull, and I guarantee we'll both get something out of the deal. This again. Before you can even touch the lever, you hear a sniff and snort behind you as the snoring magister mumbles himself awake. One bloodshot eye opens, and then another. It's my shift over. Are you here to relieve me? Oh, wait, you're no magister. You're a sorcerer. What are you doing here, filthy elf? Choose your words carefully. My fists ache to meet a new face. Those idiots can't even walk straight without mucking it up. <laughs> was it Rix? <laughs> I bet it was Rix. <laughs> can't just leave the prisoner alone, though. I heard he might be the one causing trouble upstairs. If it's all the same, I think it's best he comes with me. Some of it... Sorcerer, we haven't got all day. No. No. That's my problem, so. A dead magister. So Somebody much for a peaceful that. stroll.
empty. Not the most elegant solution, was it? And I'm back where I started. Nowhere to go but up. Before you can even touch the lever, you... Oh, wait, you're no magister. You're a sorcerer. What are you doing here, filthy elf? <laughs> Those idiots can't even walk straight without... M I can't just leave the prisoner alone, though. I heard he might be the one causing trouble upstairs. If it's all the same. and I'll make it worth your while. You in? Your guess is as good as mine. Someone set me free, and I'll set you free. A fair trade, I should think. A gentlewoman among jesters, you... Before you can even touch the... Oh, wait, you're no magister. You're a sorcerer. What are you doing here, filthy elf? <laughs> Can't just leave the prisoner alone, though. I heard him. If it's all the same, I think it's best he comes with me. Some offense intended. You hear that, em?
your trauma. Why, you're looking a bit more chipper. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. In the meantime, your next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. You're alive, and you're having a conversation. You are on a ship, of course, but luckily for us both, we're merely sailing the plain old sea. Index fingers pressed to her lips, she pauses... A My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh, well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. A new life awaits, and if you're a particularly good girl, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. Oh, do go on. I won't hold it against you. <laughs> Promise. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking. Only to fa- My, look at the concentration on your face. All will, but no result. There you have it. See? The collar's function. It neuters you of sorts makes you unable to cast source for your own peace of mind of course you've been collared and you've been told why there really is no need for you is he oh well some problems simply sort themselves don't they she frowns and peers at you closely, resting the back of one hand on your forehead and taking your pulse. Hmm. Delusions such as these are rare, but not unheard of. I recommend a cup of mulled wine.
nor lesions, nor trauma. It was bled by magic. You've been collared, and you've been told why. There really is no need for you to linger. stands pale and silent. Her knuckles whiten around her weapon as you pass. Oh, my, these smelling suits are strong stuff. Behind the Magister, a bloodied mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. Aren't you enterprising? Go ahead. She with. Ugly sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Not with that collar on you, aunt. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. How about that? Thanks. I Nothing to see here. The pale young woman doesn't acknowledge you. She nods to the right without moving her gaze from the ground. So, anything interesting for me? Right. No known 
You are <clears throat> wife. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat-like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madame Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. Yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? You presume right. Nope, trying not to find anything out either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for it. You take care, though. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Greyish veins run down her face, and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. My mum doesn't like elves, but I have a secret. When I grow up, I'm going to be an elf. She'll get used to it. Take it easy, Chief. You don't want to get noticed for the wrong reason. Do you know Losa? She's a really good singer. I'm better, though. Listen. La, 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 la. Take it easy, Chief. You don't want to... Hmm. You look a little bit elfish. Maybe your daddy was an elf. My daddy's name is Frida. He's waiting for me at home. I'll go home soon. Well, uh, there has been a murder, Your Majesty. Maybe that has the Magister's more concerned than your appetite. Hi! Do you like to play ball? Name? Well, you aren't here on my list. Scrammy. We're trying... The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out and examines your face, tugging at your ears and prodding your nose. Fascinating. He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Oh, please. I have no... I no. I want to know about this text tells me that they created all where did these gods come from who are their people where are the others of their kind <sighs> of course now please run along no amount of pestering do you mind here's the register man good good Magister Williams has just about done with the last passenger. You faring okay so far? Trust me, with Bishop Alexander in charge, things will get a lot better from here on out. He's godwalking, you know. You head on in now. 
Williams will get you shot at fast. As soon as the just get to the park, you I reassure you, you shut today. up. You think me mad? Mad? No. Insufferable, surely. What are you trying to hear anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, Gero. You hear that? The ship, of course. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? The fellow cocks his ear, listening. That isn't anger. It's... He cocks his ear to the other side, then smiles. Anticipation. She senses something. I'd hold on to my breeches if I were you, mate. That's all you hear, though. Listen close. There now, just like that. Squeak! Aha! His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back. The other catches you before you lose your footing. There! You heard it, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Ah, this is good news, Gero. Good news. It's the wheel. The wheel. Don't you see, you beautiful idiot? Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. For my beard. That means if we've been traveling for... Yes, only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Captain, actually. And that figure tells me we're getting close to the joy. Close to what lies beyond it, too. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, Gero. He continues stroking his beard, a beatific smile on his lips, and doesn't acknowledge you anymore. And I don't intend to do away with the custom. Did you see the body? They ought to let you taste a bit. Maybe you'd find out who done it. A no doesn't become a yes over time. Never thought you'd end up a prison guard, Vic. That right? I always knew you'd turn up rotten, Ben Mezd. Your kind always hung closest to our divine, like wolves around a campfire. Well, we've got this wolf on a leash now. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with it. Well, well, what have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Hmm. There's some discoloration, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? Ah, oh, music to my beleaguered stomach. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave? In short, uh, tailor? Oh, but to feel the caress of satin on my scarlet skin once more. A most satisfactory answer indeed. On then to my final query. 
Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. The very basics, then. I suppose that's a start. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can cook, tailor, and groom. Well, that just about settles it. I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As of now, you are my slave. Of course you accept. Mine wasn't an offer, it was an order. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. We'll go over your duties once we reach Fort Joy. Now shoot! When I want you to attend me, I'll whistle. Until then, go stand in a discreet corner somewhere, will you? I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than boiled roots and rotten tubers, too. Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. <gasps> the indignity. Who we are, what we've done. They mean less than nothing as long as these collars choke us. Who we are, what... An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. Rolling dice? Deciding fates. Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest tint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. She eyes you suspiciously. Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. Just like you. And I'm quite good at it, too. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue. Efficient, like a cat grooming. Hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers. As everyone lay sleeping, you lay awake thinking of someone back home. A very special someone you were reminiscing <laughs> about the things you used to do together. Of course it is. The truth's right there, skin deep. You may have to bite a bit deeper, though. Not every elf is as skilled in the art as I am. But anyway, don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. You put a knuckle in it. I'm trying The to woman watch. keeps rolling her tongue. They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle and you can carry it on. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? Sufferable, surely. What are you trying to hear? Anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Never thought you'd end up a prison guard, Vic. Would you put a that knuckle right. in it? I'm trying yeah, to. I always knew you'd turn out rotten, Ben Mest. I'm busy watching for clues, sorcerer. Go take your sob story somewhere else. A scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. 
Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp Ifan. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen Magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced Magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. No. The dead man, Finn, is it? I'd no business with him. And I wouldn't put a man down without good reason. He glances over at Magister Victor, who's staring back at him with pointed intensity. Damn shame sheer annoyance isn't reason enough. The joy, I've heard a lot. Nothing good. No surprise there, since Bishop Alexander runs the show. Wonder if we'll get to meet the ringmaster himself. Not eager to bow before the great Bishop Alexander, son of the Divine himself. My sentiments exactly. But Vic here will blow a blood vessel if he hears you talking like that. What are you conspiring about over there? You! Elf! What's your name? Ah, oh, don't mind him. Vic's just got a bee in his bonnet. And that bee is me. Name! Magister Victor looks at you suspiciously, then scrawls something illegible down in a... Away with you! Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips, as he leans back against the wall. What? Didn't make... What? Didn't make it clear the first time. Scram. I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Sufferable, surely. They're everywhere now, the Magisters. In my hometown, you can't throw a shoe without hitting one. This We're not safe from them, not anywhere. I've seen more appetizing things coming out of plague stricken There's. There's nothing else I can do. If you'll be pardoning me, I'll be much obliged. Are all I was given? Unacceptable. I've never dined on anything less than a dozen dollars. Take care of yourself now. There has been a murder, Your Majesty. Maybe that has the Magisters more concerned than your appetite. Well, perhaps you're absolutely right.
Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous-looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it, then? You murdered that poor fella? Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. There are others whose lives must end. Good God! The woman's mad! You there, sorcerer! Go and fetch Magister Siwan! We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her, man, quickly! If she casts Source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. Dwarf lies in a heap on the floor, his great beard twisted and tangled around him. He is stock still. You The dwarf lies in a heap on You hear a faint thud. No! Oh. What? What happened? It's water. The lizard's eyes clip. You shake the lizard by the Final Dark. Not yet. Her hand lies limp. The dice roll darkly. The... the young woman lies in a heap on the floor. She's breathing normally, but she doesn't stir. Magister lies on the floor, unconscious and bleeding from a... lies on the floor.
blocked. I'll need to find another way. Well, onwards and upwards. Not long before this thing snaps into splinters. to get off this wreck and quick.
pass through the door and are suddenly face to face with an undead. His the skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. No, no, no. What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? It catches fire. It turns into must when wet. It cannot even resist acid. No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. The skeleton looks up. Oh, it's you. Shouldn't you be running and screaming or some such? The skeleton groans and looks. Yes, indeed. Now, if you're really quite finished, I believe you have lifeboats to flee to. The skeleton holds up. I am trying, and I will be damned. Go on, go. Please, my. painted recently, judging from its pungent. You press your palm against the door to open it. The wood feels neither cold nor warm, but simply... The moment you touch the door, your belly goes... It doesn't budge. The door groans open. Something's breaking through. What the hell are those things? Death fog. I need to get out of here. Now.
Children and dwarfs first, just like the old story. The dwarf yanks at one of the nearby ropes. I said there were other people down there. You see those tentacles, kid? It's time for getting the hell out of here. Fucky, fucky, fucky! 
There's a ladder right over there. You can go straight down. You're gonna be the death of us, you hear? Games begin. I faced worse. Magister Suan, the one who put on this damn collar. Sounds like she needs help. She tries to speak, but can only gape as she clutches with jagged movements. She raises her clenched fist and holds out a length of cloth, soaked with some kind of blood, quickly soaks through the cloth. Magister Siwan's mouth opens and closes, her eyes wide in terror. It's working. The pressure is stemming the flow. Something within the ship snaps. The floorboards shudder. Siwan struggles to her feet, clinging to you. <laughs>
Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their vile magic lured the Voidwoken. All who were aboard are presumed dead. Yours faithfully into eternity. High Judge Orivan. Voidwoken made short bloody work of the ship. Am I the lone survivor? It seems someone, something, wanted me alive. to speak, but can only with jagged movements. She raises her clenched blood, quickly so... Ah! She tries to speak, but can only gape as bloody bubbles from... She's no more than a groan. She's no more than... She's no more... Honorable Dallas, we lost a ship sailing sorcerer prisoners to Fort Joy. We assume some escaped and broke their collars. Their Those Voidwoken made short bloody work of the ship. Am I the lone survivor? It seems someone, something, wanted me alive. Boy, 
they've woken? Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn, they've made it to shore. Bloody collars were supposed to keep those things at bay. Drowned and eaten by a void woken. I wonder in which order.
spot a strange lizard gazing over the water with a steady, malcontent stare. His skin is of a bright blood-red color. Could he be... Yes, you recognize him from the ship. It would seem you're not the only one who survived the tentacles of the deep. The lizard turns about with the graceful ease of a dancer, or a duelist. You lock eyes with his, two smoldering embers that sizzle your very soul. I did survive, yes. And chances are I wouldn't have, had you not returned to the aid of your fellow passengers down in that dreadful hold. You have my gratitude. Hand over heart, he salutes you with a bob of the head. More than a nod, though less than a bow. Yes, I'm sure you've all the makings of a hero and all that, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Nevertheless, one good turn does deserve another, so as far as the whole slave business is concerned, let's just forget about it. You may as well have your freedom. Now then, if there's nothing further, I'm sure I don't mean to sound condescending, but I had thought it quite self-evident. He sighs, drum. Tell me, what do you see when you cast your glance over this ocean? Memories. He looks out over the water once more, and so do you. A few tra- As for myself, when I can- I see continents dotted with mighty cities. And shimmering along the soft curve of the sea's horizon, I picture the palaces that formed my paradise. Lost. What do you mean, what do I mean? I'm me. Suddenly, having all the air of being deeply offended. Well, don't just stand there gawking like an ape at an abacus. Or do you really mean to tell me you don't know who I am? Oh. I am the... Of course you... There's a brief moment's... That said, I suppose I must own up to the fact that I find myself rather in between all-conquering and world tape. The grandeur that is my fate has... a uh, hit a bit of a snag. But never you worry. For the throne I was destined, and my throne I shall have. Truly. A kind offer indeed. Fine. I... On one... For reasons I'll not disclose right now... It is imperative that I should meet with a dreamer. One of them may- I've reason to believe one of them may be present on this island. Promise me we'll look for him, and I'll ex- Jolly good. So, now that that's settled, even if you are as versed in the art of eloquence as I am, that our swords will be doing a lot of the talking from here on out goes without saying. As a born fighter, I prefer the perfection of the blade myself. But I'm well acquainted with the secrets of magic, and yes, even subterfuge. What say you? Very well. Onwards then to victory. The Red Prince nods and gives you a... Now, as you're aware, you'll be traveling with a prince. Proper forms of address include your majesty, your royal highness, or, or if you're feeling particularly frivolous, my lord. As your luck would have it, I seem to be fresh out of luggage, so you won't be required to carry my belongings. Of course, there are other forms of protocol to bear in mind, but I'll see to it you'll pick up the rest as we go. So, without further ado, let us be off! Squirrel's nose twitches as you approach, but the creature turns away.
quite right. Do seek my counsel. I highly recommend it. I intend to rule an empire one day, not a tiny outcropping in this. To that end, I suggest we focus on the obvious. A farewell to Fort John. Of course, I'd much appreciate it if we managed to find a dreamer first. The old king, Bracchus, watches the horizon. The statue responds to you. You feel it reach out to you, into you. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin. The... I'm not supposed to talk to elves. Um, well, elves eat people and their pets. Elves don't know the alphabet. The child's eye. People ask you to eat them? Really? Are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here? The child looks at you straight on. I don't see any sauce on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. <laughs> Maybe you're right. At least they don't mind where anyone goes. They know we can't leave the island. It's a lot nicer out here than I... They're gone now. Their Majesties took them already. I guess now they're cured? And maybe they're waiting for... But you didn't die. I guess I am. But it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. There isn't anywhere safer. You'll see. black cat. Some would see this as an omen. The cat's eyes are clouded and grey, but it stares at you with acute intensity. Its eyes clear, and it shakes its head, confused. Hey lady, it's a lot nicer here than that stinking boat, huh? I'm sure glad you went back to save the others. Saw one of them wringing out their tunic at the shore a few hours ago. Say hi for me. The cat's eyes, it appears.
Magister. Now speak. Stay back, sorcerer, and stay silent. Our Godwoken speaks. We know you've been helping sorcerers escape, Atusa. We have proof. I'd sooner cut my tongue out than lie to you, Alexander. I know nothing of any escapees. If you can tell the Godwoken no more, your tongue is of no use. Cut it out. This can't be serious, Alexander. Come! You should know by now to obey your superior, Magister. Whatever she may ask. Stay silent! Atusa pinches the tip of her tongue with two fingers and brings her... Stop! My father, may his soul rest in peace, would be disappointed in you, Atusa. To think you would lie to his only son, your bishop. The fate of our realm hangs in the balance. If you will not help us save it, Alice. Yes, you're... I... What a waste. Come, we'll be needed elsewhere. name throbs across your brain. Verdas, Verdas, Verdas. He must escape. He cannot die here. He cannot. The Lizard Magister, or what's left of her, lies in a puddle of gore. She was a lizard, yet a magister. No matter her reasons, her penalty was fair. something. I wonder where this leads. As the alcove opens up, you see the same skeleton that you met on the boat before. He's leaning over a corpse, prodding and pulling. Bugger. How on earth am I... Skeletal fingers reach down and grip the skin of the dead man's face, pulling sharply upwards. After a few more tugs at the man's cheeks, the skeleton relents, letting the head drop to the ground with a damp thud. Damnation. That stuck fast. I wonder, does the beard act as some form of anchor? Oh, it's you. I must admit I'm surprised. Perhaps you're more buoyant than I suspected. Why, it's face, of course. A face that seems rather... I would normally employ a tool to... I could then craft a mask to hide my... The skeleton grabs the corpse by the cheeks and pulls hard, grunting in frustration as the body's skin holds firm. Because my own was stolen from me. And the idea of being chased across Rivalon by every idiot with a torch does not appeal. Oh, get away! 
Monster, hide the children! Oh, you are simple beasts. And you so, if I am to traverse this land, I will need a mask to disguise my features. Oh, please. It is far too complicated. It requires more finesse than can be achieved by a rock tied to a stick, which I assume is your oeuvre. No, but once I have extracted the required material from this specimen, and then I can return to finding my people. I cannot be the last Eternal. The rest of them are somewhat absent. At least from this realm. As for the others, well, there is an excavation site at the Black Pit's oil fields. Perhaps there I'll find a cult? Hardly. We were a race that existed before the idea of race was needed. I could ask you to imagine an Eternal as a creature of incredible intelligence and skill. But I think We studied the mysteries of the universe. We created works of great art. We... We disappeared, but I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. We will have... Well, that hardly seems relevant. Several centuries, in fact, I was sealed in a tomb for daring to be curious about the world. It seems our king did not agree that the universe should be explored to its... Perhaps I should thank him. It seems I was spared whatever happened to the others. I wonder if... I suppose. Circum... You seem more... at ease in this world than I. A guide would certainly... Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps... Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality. But being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Now, splendid. Very well. The cat's on. It appears con
is she? You go with us. Who are you? Are you from the shelter? She says nothing of another. Fire, alas! She is so late! Never mind, it is not- She leans forward. Please, do not leave- Psst! Fear, alas! I'm sorry, dear one. hear a small whimpering sound from behind a basket. You peer behind it and find a small human child holding her knees and trembling. The child quiets and seems comforted by your presence. She looks up at you with curious eyes. The child nods and reaches up to you. As you hold her, her breathing grows slow and calm. Her wet face is damp on your neck. She lets go and looks up at you with a small smile. Thanks. You're nice. You can have this. I found it. She nestles back into her spot on the ground and starts tracing figures. A little family in front of a house in the dirt. Transforming.
Is it not enough that you travel with me? Go on then, bark away. Let's see if we can find. Well, I thought a brief swim in the sea. La or perhaps, and this is just a thought, we could. F you hear a small whimpering. The child quiets and seems comforted. The child nods and reach. You can have this. She nestles back into her spot on the ground. This is no time for idle chit-chat. You hear a small whimpering sound from behind a basket. You peer behind it and find... You hear a small whim. The child quiets and seems the child not. You can have... She nestled... A Magister offers to help us flee. Atusa. She says there are many Magisters who do not agree with the Bishop. She says, but Atusa is overdue. She promises to come at noon. We are afraid to stay, afraid to leave. I see. I... The Elf uses her palm. Do you know the homeland? I wish to take my little one. The elf uses her palms to wipe away two steady streams of tears. Do you know the home? Transforming. 